the fall time when we know, we know that if we paid attention to this young person before he even got locked up the first time, that he would not be going in, much less going in and coming out. And then once he gets in, what rule of nature says that you can take a human being, lock him up in a cell, isolate him from everybody else in the so-called civilized world, teach him absolutely nothing about self-esteem, about who he is, belittle him with a number, where he even loses the slave name that has been given to him. And just see, and then after all of this, when it is decided mostly by budget that he's going or she is going to be discharged, to allow that person to leave being known as a convict, where society sometimes have allowed their loved ones to disassociate themselves from them, no skills, no education, and the need to survive. And more often than not, they go right back to where they started. This population and this democracy has built up to be over 2 million people. Which means that it takes billions of dollars for the governments, local, state, and federal, to invest in engaging people who do absolutely nothing productive for society. It just doesn't make any economic sense for us to be threatened by India and China because of the billions of people that they got collectively. And here with several hundred billions of dollars, we're locking up the best minds that we have in the country. It doesn't make any sense to go into any international competition and we tie our hands behind our back, taking the youngest of the young, Locking them up knowing that most of them will never be able to return to productive work. And then if you take the cost of education, combined with the cost of incarceration, the investment is so small to avoid and to have the best people in the world. So I know that Malcolm and, and, and my city councilwoman will be talking. But I just want you to know, you ain't finished with me yet. <laughs> I had no idea until I walked in here that there was any spiritual connection with what you were doing at all. I didn't see any literature here. And until I really saw the mom and some of the clothes that you had, then I realized that the understanding of self-esteem, the understanding of rules, not of just civilization, but the understanding of movement, love for Allah, for God, for recognizing that you have to love yourself first, then you need more than a dog number. You need a name, you need a background, you need a culture. You have to like yourself first. And if all they do is take away from you what God has given you, and that is your self-respect, then there is a vacuum here that can be filled spiritually. So I don't know what they teach you at John Jay. I don't know what they teach you throughout the world. But one thing is abundantly clear, that the Muslims have developed a communication system that allows people to have their self-respect and their dignity. And if mistakes are made, and I like to believe that more are avoided, but when mistakes are made, that there is a plan of forgiveness, there is a plan of, of restoration of the right of being a human being and everything that comes with it. And there is the solidarity okay, so that no one right leaves listening to those okay. gates and, and cell doors closed without knowing that they're friends outside as well as the people that they do inside. Right. So we have someone in the audience, Julio Medina, would you stand please? Julio! Yes, Julio! Julio spent more time in jail than I spent in school. Julio came out and felt there were some things that he could be doing. And he too is involved in the kind of work that, in my personal belief, 
that just getting involved with people is spiritual. And no matter what you want to call it, you have to believe that you're not in charge of your space down here. You can make those decisions, but you care enough about people, and to me, that's God's work. I told you when I saw him that I was getting back to him, and I'll be getting back to the leadership in this group. And just maybe, just maybe, we can tell John Jay, do what you have to do, but don't forget what really works. God bless you. It's been a pleasure to be here, and thank you so much, my son, to leave us. Allow me to take your time as the guest speaker, and of course I'll be seeing my guest tomorrow. And we'll be out. We got to hook together because it's going to take all kinds of hands to get the people in this country to know that the name shouldn't be an ex-convict stigma. It should be here, someone that can be saved, can be productive, and can join society and become some of our greatest leaders. God bless. Thank you.